You can start to unravel the mystery of Craven Arms from this bench next to the milestone obelisk. Are you sitting comfortably? Then I'll begin. It's an absence of history which is the mystery. Scour the internet and you won't find much before 1850. Ludlow, Clun and Bishop's Castle go back hundreds of years. Why doesn't Craven Arms have a past? Meet Herr Doctor Samuel Heinrich Speicher. He was so in love with England, his nickname was Lord Speicher. He was widely travelled, a man of letters, and the King of Prussia's librarian. It's part of the strangeness of my story that we have to turn to a Prussian for an early glimpse of Craven Arms. Almost 200 years ago, this distinguished man pitched up at these crossroads by accident. He may have been widely travelled, but neither he nor his coachman seemed to have had any idea of the time taken to travel on the roads around here. He left Bishop's Castle hoping to reach Ludlow by nightfall. By the time they'd lumbered along the turnpikes and negotiated our steep hills, they'd only reached this spot, and it was already nine o'clock. Spiker writes, we resolved to stop for the night at the Craven Arms Inn, not far from the village of Norton, an inn built by Lord Craven and a very respectable place. We found the house shut, a very rare circumstance in England, a measure no doubt deemed necessary on account of its solitary situation. But after repeated knocking at the door, it was opened and we met with a very respectable reception. The year was 1816. The solitary situation is proof that there was no Craven Arms. Later in our story, we shall track down the revolution that brought the town to life. However, not everything has changed. The next morning, Lord Spiker looks out of his window. From our bedroom, we had the view of a grass plot in the centre of the high road. And in the centre of this grass plot stands an obelisk on which the distances of 48 different places are marked. Time to take a closer look at the milestone obelisk next to your bench. It's typical of the shrouded past of Craven Arms that we don't know the date of its erection. Only that it was before 1800, which would make it the oldest man-made structure in this part of town. The obelisk records the distance by coach from this spot to destinations in Scotland, Wales and the most important towns and ports in England. So although there was next to nothing here, we have another clue to the future of Craven Arms. It was an awfully convenient place to travel to or from. Let's walk up the A49 to the railway station. Having swapped our bench for the railway bridge, you might ask what this rather ordinary stretch of line has to tell us. When I look at it, I don't see a handy, flat piece of land between the Shropshire Hills. I see somewhere in the Wild West, out there on the Great Plains. Just as the Iron Horse created towns out of nowhere, towns which were the railheads for the cattle drives, 
so Craven Arms and its sheep are the creatures of this railway. Imagine you're planning this route in 1850. You know the start and the finish, Shrewsbury and Hereford. You've surveyed the land between, made sure there are no steep gradients and no sharp bends. You've planned the cuttings and the embankments. All that's left to do is to decide where to put the stations. Most of the time it's easy. Ludlow, of course, and Church Stretton, which wants to bill itself as Switzerland without the wolves and avalanches in anticipation of tourists. Round here, it's not so obvious. Why not us, wailed the people of Wistonstow. The railway company had other ideas. Let's build the station here, they said. But there's only a few hamlets. Holford, Stokesay, Newton and Newton Green, said the accountants. Look again, the visionaries said. There's that crossroads, links to Wales and the Corvedale, and all around the hills. If there weren't many two-legged passengers, soon there'd be an awful lot of four-footed ones. Eventually, the largest ewe sales in the country would be held here. After the auctions, 200 goods wagons would leave from the special sidings. And so, just as the sheep paid for Stokesay Castle, they would make the railway here profitable. The Victorians put on a very good do when they tried. And nowhere had greater cause to celebrate the coming of the railway than Craven Arms, with its large booking office, waiting rooms for men and women, sidings, turntable, cattle landing, goods warehouse. When the first train pulled in for a stop of eight minutes, it was greeted by triumphal arches and festoons of flags. There was a battery of cannon on a truck at the end of the train. The railway age had arrived with a bang. Craven Arms, the town without a past, had a future.